Hi again everyone, uh, it's Jason Smith of Bow Developments here and uh, Scarborough 17. Uh, we're back here for another B2B session. Um, really pleased today, we're down at Trolley 5 and I'm here with Ernie too. How you doing Ernie? Good man, how are you? Good. Um, I think a lot of Calgarians know, know or know of Ernie and obviously know of Trolley 5, formerly Melrose. Um, so, you know, really the origination of the Red Mile, if you will, back in the day. How long ago was that now? Oh, when geez, that Red was Mile, that 2004. Yeah, yeah, that was that was good times. Yeah. Anyways, I can't believe it's that long. Yeah, I had classic Jackson 1410. Right, that right, time. right. Okay, so so we're gonna talk to Ernie a little bit today. Uh, he's been through a lot of ups and downs in in uh, Calgary here with business, and I think we'll get some good insights today. So, uh, Ernie, let's just start. Tell us a little bit about your background, how you sort of came into this this line of work and some of your other uh, places that, that are under your umbrella. Man, I was fortunate enough, like 18 years old, my family owns the Silver Dragon, yeah. so it's been around for 58 years, but right. the plan was never to go into the industry. And at 18 years old, I was fortunate enough to meet my mentor at that time at uh, the Seahorse Pub and Restaurant down in the South. Okay. <laughs> Dropped out of uh, university, and uh, the rest is history, as they say. So, you know, kind of worked my way up through the ranks and I was a general manager by the time I was 22. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, other than Trolley 5 right now then, uh, what's what's under the umbrella and, and, and what do you have uh, you know, possibly on the horizon? We, we had uh, two new concepts that we were looking at um, pre-COVID uh, and they've obviously been put on hold right now. Uh, right now our focus is, you know, the brewery at Trolley 5, you know, our, our, you know, our liquor stores, uh, the home deliveries, that aspect, and then of course, you know, making sure that we have our team still employed here in the restaurant, right. um, trying to work through the, you know, the spatial distancing rules, but uh, we were able to bring back 98% of our staff, so right now our focus is, is this one. Okay, that's awesome. So let's just unpack that a little bit. What, what were you immediately faced with as an emergency when, when this COVID sort of started hitting that you had to overcome, and how did you really kind of go about that? Like day to day because obviously it was a bit of a challenge right then right? well obviously you know the number one challenge was laying off 98 percent of our staff you know we went from uh 82 people in the building down to five wow you know so my focus was what do we need to do right now to grind our way out of this with the five people that we have and hope that we can you know get out of COVID and keep our restaurant and our brewery in place there's no secret we, were able, we would be able to keep our brewery in place because we are contract brewing as well to keep up with our volumes. But my focus was to get out of COVID and to be able to, you know, to come out to keep the restaurant open right. and alive. Yeah. So the contract brewing is sort of, you know, serves as, uh, for lack of a better word, sort of a passive income then for the, for the restaurant almost. Because it's continually, you're able to continue to sell and distribute and whatnot. Yeah, the contract brewing has made a massive difference, not just for myself, but you know, probably all the local breweries in, yes. in Alberta. Yes. Because now, when you when you hit that situation of hitting your capacity at, at brewing capacity, you can't brew anymore. Obviously, your sales are frozen. So, right. uh, having the ability to contract brew at last spike right now has given us the ability to grow our business into the retail market. Sure. Uh, still not enough to keep 16,000 square feet alive of, of you know, a restaurant, uh, but it was able to get us through. So, you know, we're, we're, we're coming out of COVID now. I think, you know, I think a lot of people are feeling pretty good about that and where we're, where we're going. What are some of the company's goals then and your own goals and, and the mission sort of moving forward then? We've been able, we able to achieve, you know, two of the main goals, which is let's get our team re-employed, okay. right? And get everyone working again and off of EI. Um, so it was wonderful to see, you know, it was exciting to see, you know, 98% of our staff come back and out of our staff, not trying to take advantage of the government subsidy programs. Right. They just wanted to get back to work. Um, our main, you know, the second goal was to be able to contribute to charities the whole time we were closed. So, you know, our, our mentality was, well, if we're going to go down, we end up closing. Let's go down at least being able to say we're still able to give back to, to our local charities. So those two were, were achieved. Um, our main goal right now isn't just for us, it's for everybody on 17th to see them, you know, make a comeback and a healthy comeback at that right. uh, and bring back that vibrancy, which is already starting to pick up with the extended patios on 17th Avenue. Yeah. But 
Uh, our goal has always been, and, and even when we were during COVID, we were not just delivering our beer, we were delivering uh, records from Blackbird Records on 17th. We were delivering games from Stealing Home on 17th. Right. Uh, we promoted market. We didn't do food. We promoted market, you know, because they were doing such a wonderful job of, of curbside with their food. So right. uh, our goal is is the health and well-being of, of our avenue and our industry, really. Yeah, and that's great. And and we've touched on this aspect really in a lot of a lot of these videos. And I think it's it's a Calgarian thing, right? Um, is is to is to collaborate. Now, I think COVID, what COVID's done is really forced us into that arena. Uh, you know, for us too. Like we, we're we've actually gotten uh, two sales over the last few weeks, which is blows everyone's mind. But I think you know because Scarborough's just right up the street from here, and we're all inner city, and we're all working together. Um, I've also come up with a program, it's a Scarborough 17 card, which I'll be talking to you after this video, but it's uh, everybody that lives at Scarborough gets, gets uh, this card, they get discounts at all of the different businesses around, which brings customers to you guys, it brings convenience to my buyers, all of that kind of stuff. And I think that attitude of let's, let's all work together to create buoyancy for everybody is, is such a huge thing right now and, and I'm, it's really great to see that you're doing a lot of that stuff. So, um, what? Uh, what, what, what do you think are, are potential roadblocks, I guess, if you will? Like, what are, what are some of the fears of not only you and this business, but because you know a lot of the people on 17th, you've been engaged with them for years and years and years. So what are some of the biggest fears right now out there, you think, for some of the business owners that are going on? Well, the largest fear right now is landlord-tenant relations. Um, that is number yeah. one, bar none. Uh, you know, there are a number of landlords that are ex exercising the rent subsidy program right. um, and trying to do whatever they can to keep their tenants live and viable. Yeah. And then there are the landlords that are, quite frankly, not um, even considering it. You know, they're charging full rent uh, for tenants that are still have their doors closed. And these are long long time good paying tenants that have never missed rent or, or Calgary business or property tax have given back to the economy and I just you know our that's our biggest fear is, is the landlord tenant relations that that need to be kind of tight tightened up here as you know we come out of COVID. So what do you think could be done about that like do you think that maybe getting a bunch of people together and getting and, and sort of maybe getting everybody in the same room and having an actual conversation about that might be might be something viable. We were, we were able to start up the Alberta Hospitality Association during COVID. So, um, you know, across Alberta, we've got over 400, 500 restaurants now that are actually involved with us. Uh, we were able to lobby government, you know, so they've already come forward with uh, non-evictions for good long-standing tenants in the commercial area. Um, our focus right now isn't just, you know, the landlord-tenant uh, relations, but, you know, is there going to be any more support? Is there going to be a lengthier um, support program, hopefully federally or provincially, that comes out to keep all the small businesses alive? Right. So, I guess, you know, sort of wrapping up a little bit, what would you say, as I've stated, you've been in business a long time and you've been through a lot of ups and downs, so what would you say to some other, other business owners out there? whatever they're in the business of that would help sustain them through you know not only now coming out of this but possibly further um, adversities uh, you know things like culture and different things but what are some you know maybe even financial but what, what are some tips that you could give people that you've maybe messed up in the past learned from whatever like that that you see that are keys to continuing to thrive in, in difficult times I, I think the number one key right now is exactly what you've done with even your development up there um, if you're not prepared at this time to work hard and by what i mean work hard i'm talking um you know 16 18 hour days right now of not sitting up in stress and anxiety but how are we going to get through this solution basing solution basing you know being creative and pivoting and and uh like you said working with with your neighbors and community that's you know if, for, for the entrepreneurs out there that really truly understand how much work it's going to take right now right. they're not they'll flourish i truly believe that i, I it's going to take a year maybe 14 16 months yeah but uh, for the entrepreneurs that can get out of this and buckle down and work with their neighbors or pivot with you know other businesses sure. um I, I think they'll be fine once yeah. the 14 to 18 months comes by but um it's hard 
it's hard not to give up. It's hard to wake up every morning knowing you're, you know, you're running a, you know, running into a debt, you know, and deeper debt. Yeah. Um, but again, if you can, if you can buckle down with your business partners or your team and figure out the angles to get out of it, mm -hmm. I think people will be fine. But number one would be, yeah, hard work ethic. It's there's no doubt about it right now. Right, and that's I would I would 100% agree with that, and I think I would just add, you know, the culture of your of your team, the people that you have working with you, for you, around you, uh, is is crucially important, and that that comes as a business owner from day one is how you build that the, the the ethos that you create within your own business and and that loyalty is built up then over time an example i've seen you walking around here doing doing all the things and, and participating and engaging your customer your, your your staff so i think that that rubs off and then they want to go the extra mile as well because it's not only you as a business owner it's everybody has to go the extra mile right now that's the only way to get over the hump right so um, Ernie, I appreciate your time, really do, and uh, I hope I hope people got some value from this. I think it was a great chat, and uh, come on down here to Trolley Five. They're they're open. They've got this great new beer uh, going on here, Yacht Rock. Uh, it's, what is it, grapefruit? Grapefruit Rattler. Grapefruit Rattler. So perfect, perfect for summer. It releases today, and uh, thanks everyone for tuning in, and we'll we'll see you at the next uh, episode of B2B. Cheers.